Who do you intend to kill with a sword? A Norseman should value his honor over his life. Vinland Saga is set in a ruthless period of time where physical strength, where power, where one's blood can take you anywhere and grant you the ability to be anybody and do anything. The most violent, the most powerful win. This is a period in time when a man's pride and honor are more valuable than anything. A time where war is everything. It's a period where a father will teach his son how to fight and how to wield a weapon, and he will see his son off to war, proud of the fathers, the brothers, and the sons that his son will kill. In this story, the glorification of war has touched every corner of Europe, even the secluded Iceland. In the year 1002, as we follow a young Thorfinn back in Iceland, the young men still dream of battle, and children here still run around with their wooden swords, pretending to be warriors, aspiring to kill their enemies. The Valhalla is the reward for those who die in battle, a reward reserved for men and only for warriors. When it's announced that they will be going to war, they celebrate, as if they've been waiting their whole lives for this moment, and they have. To fight and to kill is every man's calling. It is their purpose. Thorfinn in these early chapters is no different. He is one of the many victims of this romanticization of war. As a boy, he even criticizes his ancestors for running away from it. The way Thorfinn sees the world and responds to its many trials and tribulations is that of a child who has grown up in this culture. He gets angry and aggressive when play fighting amongst his age mates. The other adults are impressed when he breaks one of the other kid's arms. A born warrior, they call him, because he has his father's blood. Thorfinn wants to be a warrior so bad. He wants to go on an adventure more than anything. He wants to be respected like his father. So much so that he begs Leif to accompany him on his journey every time he returns home. So much so that he sneaks onto his father's ship as they head into what he believes will be one of the greatest battles he has dreamed of. Thorfinn is but a product of his surroundings. Once our protagonist sees the great Thoris die unfairly at six years old, he responds as any child who dreams of war could. He vows to avenge his father and he spends the next 11 years of his life wholly entrenched in his quest for vengeance. He throws away any and all lessons that Thor has instilled into him and disregards the family he left behind. Eyes have a great significance in this story, and when Thorfinn's father is taken down by Ashalad, his eyes become one of a man, though only a boy, with hate in his heart. Eyes that resemble Ashalad's. Whether it was his father's lingering voice that spoke to him as it did in the first chapter, or just his lust for revenge blinding him to anything other than his goal, Thorfinn wasn't as bad as the other Vikings. But he wasn't a good person either. During one of Thorfinn's first raids, when he is injured on English soil, the young warrior gets nursed back to health by English farmers, and an old lady saves him from local soldiers. As compensation, he warns them about the incoming Vikings, as he burns a nearby shack to signal them. When the farmers don't leave, and Thorfinn sees the old lady again, his look is one of great remorse. This Thorfinn hasn't entirely changed yet, because in that moment his eyes revert to how they were when he was just a child. Such a jarring contrast, as his face and his top are filled with blood, but his eyes are filled with great sorrow. And you realize how tragic this all is. Here Thorfinn is only 10 years old and he has chosen this cruel life. As the men behind him grin on their way to pillage and kill. Thorfinn then takes a breath and then his eyes mature once again. They regain that hateful look. I think this was the moment when he flushed any sense of morality that he had down the drain. He then joins the Vikings in their pillaging. It's what he must do to avenge his father to regain his father's honor at 10 years old. He wasn't as bad as the other Vikings, but still, he killed innocents and pillaged their homes. He didn't partake in any of the sexual assault that the Vikings did, but he still turned a blind eye to it all. There wasn't any joy in his conquest. Unlike Ashalad's band, 
and yet he continued to follow them because he was so laser focused on his goal. Thorfinn would do anything and ignore any deed, no matter how vile, if it meant being one step closer to killing Ashalad. In the second chapter, the leader of the Vikings says that everyone is a slave to something. And in that very chapter, a slave speaks to Thorfinn, sensing that he and her are alike given his situation. Thorfinn refutes this idea. He calls himself a free man, but the boy has no ideals, no values, and no motives beyond his current goal. Thorfinn has become a slave to vengeance, and Ashalad holds his chain. Ashalad's relationship with Thorfinn is so interesting in this story, as he is such a massive part of Thorfinn's life, and so it makes Ashalad's relationship with the audience in this story rather unique. Ashalad is such a terrible person. He has wiped out entire villages of innocent people. His men do awful, terrible things. They are terrible people. And yet, sometimes it feels like the worst thing he does in this story is manipulate this child. And despite it all, Ashalad becomes hard to hate. Considering his charm, his charisma, his intelligence, it feels so wrong to say it, but Ashalad becomes a father figure to Thorfinn. No matter how badly we want to refute that idea for Thorfinn's sake, and how badly Thorfinn himself refutes that idea. In Ragnarok, Thorfinn dreams of his fallen father, who asks him to protect his sister and mother. Thor's also asks him to give up on this quest for revenge asking his son if he thinks this quest makes him happy. The young warrior wakes up and sees his bandmates forcing themselves on a captured girl, and he looks down on them but does nothing. In the episode before this, he mentions how he hates war. Subconsciously or consciously, I'd argue, there is a part of Thorfinn that knows what he is doing is senseless, because it's been 11 years and he hasn't gotten any closer to taking Ashala down, but at the same time, it's been 11 years. He can't just walk away. He saw his father as a hero, Thor's the troll, and he died in a way that was so unfair and dishonorable. Thor's won the duel and still he died. For Thorfinn, what would that say of him if he just lets his father's killer roam free, knowing he had a chance to avenge him? Ashalad understands this and he uses it to his advantage, as mentioned, but he does show Thorfinn a level of respect that he doesn't show anyone other than Bjorn. Ashlad repeatedly says how he hates the Vikings, he hates Norsemen, but with Thorfinn, he lectures the boy about history, and he subtly informs him about what he's after. In critical moments, he even trusts Thorfinn, like how he entrusts the young warrior to look after Prince Knut. When it's time to fight Thorkel, he nurses the boy back to health while coaching him against the giant. When Ashalad fights his former Viking comrade, Thorfinn aids him without question. The leader of the Vikings doesn't hate Thorfinn the way he hates all Norsemen, because Ashalad never hated Thor's either. In fact, in their soul encounter, Ashalad recognizes Thor's as ideals and he respects it immensely. Sure, he might have said he was joking about Thor's leading his band, but there was undoubtedly some truth to it. I think Thor's was a man that he wished he could have been. And after their duel, he tells the troll that he acknowledges him. He respects his wishes, and he leaves the boat. And that final look on Ashalad's face when signaling his men to kill Thors was one of disappointment. Ashalad, after a few years of worrying that he would actually be killed in his sleep as he did to his father, slowly came to understand that Thorfinn truly is the son of Thors, with the potential to change. And a part of that was the fact that Thorfinn sought out a level of honor in revenge. He says he wants to take Ashalad down in a fair duel. That was his goal, as if there was any honor shown to Thor's when he was shot down. Ashalad recognized Thorfinn's soft streak and tried to use it to stray the boy off this path. But no matter how many times he lost to the Viking, no matter how many visits from Thor's in his dreams, nothing could stray him off this path. Not even a reunion with Leif Erikson, who had been searching for Thorfinn for the past decade, could talk some sense into him. Thorfinn instead continues to choose rage, allowing it to hack away at his memory and his morality. Only a child when he lost his father, he was beginning to lose his father's guidance as well. And as Thorkel points it out, he is embarrassed by it. Embarrassed that he has spent the last 11 years 
going against every word and action his father taught him, because it only got in the way of his anger and hatred, that as Thorkel says, he wasted those precious years. Thoris died staying true to his philosophy, believing that he left a lasting message for himself and his own beliefs, and for his son, that his actions did. And yet Thorfinn has thrown it all away, and when Thorkel detects this, it triggers the young warrior. There is nothing inside of him but a waning fury. He has no way of living up to Thor's, and yet he feels like revenge is the only way at this point that he can truly honor his father and make him proud. But Thorfinn can't just go back home now. He hasn't done enough, he says. He can't just go and face his mother and his sister again with nothing to show for it. Masculinity plays a big part in this society and the way it has been shaped in the Norse world. What does it say of him as a man, as Thor's his only son, if he comes home not having restored the honor of their family, the only way his culture has taught him how? He will be branded a coward, someone who ran away, the same way he ridiculed his ancestors when he was just a child. Moreover, will Helga and Ylva, will they be proud of the man they see, a man who's killed and pillaged and plundered along with the most savage Vikings? And all for what? And while Thorfinn continues on this path with no end in sight, it becomes a bit staggering when you juxtapose Thorfinn's lack of growth with Knut's progress. Knut now has the eyes of a changed man. He doesn't have the eyes of a naive child anymore. He now has the same pitying regard of those who seek a better life. Where Thorfinn only searches for revenge, Canute is offered vengeance by Ashalad for killing his father figure, Ragnar, and yet Canute declines. And we see where their paths diverge. We see how alike and yet different they are. Regardless, Thorfinn marches on. He then takes on Ashalad in what would be their final duel the most one-sided and heartbreaking one. Coming off Bjorn's death generated a certain level of anger for Ashalad, and now Thorfinn is here demanding another duel. Without his weapon, Ashalad embarrasses Thorfinn, and finally tells him about his past, and about his own personal desire for vengeance. How his mother was a slave, and his father was a terrible man, but a powerful king. How ashamed he is of his own blood. Ashalad explains to Thorfinn what real hatred looks like. It isn't respect, it isn't obedience, it isn't honor among warriors, like Thorfinn believes it to be. There is no honor in hatred and vengeance. It is cold-hearted, calculated, and ruthless, just like how Askeladd planned it and killed his father in two years. Thorfinn has been around for eleven. Askeladd tells him and shows him in their duel that they are not the same, that they are not built the same. Essentially, he is telling Thorfinn to give up on his quest. Ashalad doesn't know what it's like to have a sister and a father who love him. He doesn't know what it's like to have a community working together to care for each other. Ashalad parallels Thorfinn, but he lives as a cautionary tale. They both desire nothing more than revenge, but Ashalad was never able to move on past killing his father. He could never put those nights when his mother yearned for King Artorius to return behind him. He just couldn't do it, because that was all he knew. He didn't have anybody to tell him to become a true warrior, to tell him that he had no enemies. For Ashalad, everyone was his enemy, and he demonstrates that when forced to choose between Wales, his home, his mother, and Canute, he cuts the king down, and he yells at Thorfinn to stay back and allows Canute to kill him, for political reasons of course, but also to free Thorfinn of his burden. I think he makes a conscious choice to try and steer Thorfinn, whom he sees so much of himself, to a different path. Ashalad took his vengeance away to ensure that this kid, who's had the privilege of being the son of the great Thors, doesn't become like him. Maybe out of respect for the troll, maybe he felt sorry for Thorfinn. We'll never know. Now there was truly nothing for him. More than the fact that this hatred has brought Thorfinn nothing, it's that it is so taxing to hate someone to the level that Thorfinn did, for as long as he did. Every morning, every night, every waking moment is spent dedicating so much of himself to entering that state of mind. Eleven years, rage has boiled inside him, now gone in a few seconds. And couple that with the conflicting emotions that Thorfinn has developed towards Ashalad, he's so confused and lost. 
Thorfinn has come to respect and even see Ashalad as a father figure. He is just a kid who needed guidance, and he got it in the form of this evil, terrible man. For the second time, he's lost a father figure and he could do nothing about it. And to Thor's, he now has nothing to honor him by, nothing to help his soul rest. We know that eyes are symbolic in this story. Eyes that rage, eyes that pity others, innocent eyes. Look at Thorfinn's eyes in this panel, as he watches the reason for his existence slowly bleed out. These are not the eyes of a man who is filled with anger or hatred anymore. No. These are the eyes of a man filled with deep, deep sadness and worse, emptiness for so many things in this moment. His identity has become synonymous with vengeance, now he has lost it. Thorfinn has become a man with nothing inside, and he's realized that he's forsaken his father's ideals for a fruitless quest. For his crimes against the prince, Thorfinn becomes a slave, and how he is depicted here gives us an idea of how much he's changed. Thorfinn has always been small, but as a slave, his stature is even more diminished. He's lost a ton of weight, he's been getting crumbs of bread for lunch, and he is so apathetic to his own existence that he won't even ask for more. He's so different now. He used to be so vulgar. As a Viking, he took what he wanted and he only did what benefited him. A slave to no one, he said. Now a lifeless man going through the motions. A man who doesn't even desire freedom. He doesn't even want to go home. Hell. Iceland hasn't been his home for over a decade. He has no home. Thorfinn says something that enslaved people often feel in this series, that some of them say. What's so great about living? Thorfinn asks, what does he have to look forward to? His days are nothing but agony, and his nights are haunted by nightmares. And Thor's words of wisdom now barely reach his memory after ten years of anger. He doesn't feel worthy of Thor's words now. He is nothing. Thorfinn has reached rock bottom and he is ready to die. Though as his body reacts to Snake, he opens up the possibility of having a subconscious desire to live and he is now forced to investigate that through the life that he now lives for the first time since becoming a slave. Potter shows him great kindness. Einar continues to treat Thorfinn kindly despite his hatred for warriors despite the fact that people like Thorfinn are the reason he is a slave today, the reason he has no family. Still, he sees him and treats him as a friend. These acts are enough for Thorfinn to consider what he gains by living. The fact that Einar has been enslaved his whole life, what good has life given him? And yet, he wants to live. He desires freedom. He is still kind. Einar is able to move past it all. Why? But it's not as easy for Thorfinn. Part of his apathy to his new life is that he hates himself. Thorfinn now despises himself for what he's done in the past decade and for what he had left behind. I think he despises himself for not being able to hate Ashalad anymore. I think Thorfinn still holds on to some ideals of the Norsemen because that would make him a coward, right? That he doesn't hate the man who killed his father anymore. He's incredibly incredibly self-loathing. Add on the fact that he is good at nothing other than battle, Thorfinn simply can't see himself as a man with any value. Even after a few months of searching for a will to live, for a reason, Thorfinn remains empty. It's been so long that he questions his ability to change, to be reborn. When their wheat gets destroyed, Thorfinn can't bring himself to anger because he feels like he has no right to anger. And in a sense, he is correct. He was the one who spent the last decade of his life looting and pillaging and destroying things that did not belong to him. He feels like this is deserved. And he also feels that he has no right to any positive emotions or feelings of retribution. As he says it, he is an empty man. Circle tells him the good part about being empty is that he can fill himself with anything. He has the liberty of choosing the type of man he will be. This is the first step to Thorfinn's true battle. Can he allow himself to be something else? Can he allow himself to begin feeling once again? To fill himself with emotion? 
But just as uh, he's learning his way around the farm, he too is changing, learning patience, finding direction. He too is regaining his purpose, his will to live. And what I absolutely adore about this story is that the first time he tries to take a meaningful step towards growth, he fails because growth isn't linear. Thorfinn's relationship with violence is different than anyone else's. Thorfinn has relied on it for so many years. It has become his battery, his fuel. It has caused so much harm to him and his perception of himself. Going to punch the farmhand accomplished nothing. It only brought him back to the world that he was comfortable in. But the fact that his mind is taking him to this place means that he is feeling guilty. It means that he is feeling something. And the imagery here is so powerful. It's incredibly horrifying. As souls pull Thorfinn back into the world that he left. He doesn't remember them, but they remember him. Each and every one of them. But it's the people like the old lady who combed his hair and nursed him back to health and saved him. The people that he's wronged the most are the people that he needs to satisfy. Those are the type of ghosts that he needs to appease. And the one ghost he does remember is the man who's been at the center of his life for the past decade or so. Ashelot tells Thorfinn that he now has to accept what he's done. He has no choice, and he will have to carry these souls and make it up to them. He will have to atone. He will carry this weight for the rest of his life. And the best he can do is bring them to a place where they can finally rest. And in the panel later on, in this image of the souls, hundreds of them actively tugging on his shirt, pulling his arms down, is one of my favorite panels of the entire series. Because it's such a powerful illustration of how heavy this burden is, and how even one more death, even one more soul, would be too much, he says. But he has to carry them with him, everywhere he goes. And while yes, Thorfinn fears for his life here, his most prevalent emotion is regret. Thorfinn is fully sobbing here. He truly feels for them. Fight your true battle, Ashalad urges him. His true battle is to never forget that place, that nightmare, and to never, ever return. The true battle is overcoming himself. It's so difficult to look past an entire society telling you what is right and wrong and glorifying these toxic, violating ideals. That's the battle that Thor has won. And it's the battle that Ashalad was quite aware of, but could never move on from his own past and his own nature. Now, he finally understands his father. What makes a true warrior? He's been asked that by Thorkel. He knows now that a true warrior is not made through the spoils of war. A true warrior is not made through the bloodshed of battle. A true warrior is not defined by their strength or their ability. A true warrior battles man's arrogance and pride and propensity for violence, not with a sword, but with kindness and patience. A true warrior only fights to protect, and they don't kill, and they are strong enough to walk away. Thor's the troll, the strongest warrior in the story, was strong enough to walk away from that life, knowing he had something bigger to protect, something more important. Thor's chose love over pride and honor. That is what being a true warrior is. After these chapters, I finally took notice of how Thorfinn's face had changed, especially the way he's drawn in this panel. This is the first time we ever see Thorfinn genuinely smile, genuinely laugh, 73 chapters in. Thorfinn the Viking's face was so burdened. The lines are always aggressive, he's always bloody and dirty, his hair was never kept. But now, just like Einar calls him a baby for discovering so much of life for the first time, his face reflects his newfound purpose. Now his eyes aren't the angry eyes of the Viking Thorfinn, and they aren't the empty eyes of a man who is nothing. And finally, he now has the eyes of his father. Eyes with an earnest desire to live. But what makes Thorfinn's road to redemption so compelling is that he doesn't just stop here. It isn't enough to simply throw down my sword, he says. Atonement is not just words and a change of heart. Those are good starting points, and half the battle is won by desiring change. But the second half is even more challenging. Thorfinn says that a man must raise more grain than he has trampled in his life. 
atonement requires action, and it finally all comes together when he comforts Arnaid with the promises of Vinland. It's at that moment when he decides to make it his life goal to make Vinland a reality. He promised the souls a place where they can go to rest. He promised Arnaid a place where she would have a desire to live. This brand of nonviolence that Thorfinn endorses, it's radical and it's outlandish, oftentimes unreasonable. Einar tells him that there is no place in this world without violence, that it's unrealistic. Thorfinn himself knows it's unrealistic, but again, we go back to what Thorfinn has seen to the reason he is so vehemently against violence. And it's those bodies that pull on his shirt, those souls that plague his sleep. Every single night, he still wakes up yelling, even after he's changed. He's so against violence because of what he has done, because of that place that he's visited, the hell of endless slaughter. He is this way because he cannot bear even one more death. Not one more death. He's so repulsed by it. He's so tired of death. And his ideals are challenged constantly. He's put in compromising positions, like when he faces down Canute's army. But to prove his dedication, he withstands 100 blows. When he meets with Canute, he tells him that he will run away. Though he has been absolutely pummeled, the man who hit him is not his enemy. Thorfinn believes that peace cannot be brokered through war. That the peace he seeks is not just a place without violence. It is a place where that hell that he endured does not exist. It is a place where nobody has to carry the burdens of hundreds of souls haunting them. Because he knows that the souls weigh you down. He knows that not everyone is as lucky as he is to have escaped that place. Thorfinn's brand of peace and pacifism ensures that that place will never exist. And Thorfinn's brand of peace ensures that everyone will have a desire to live that no one will question why they are alive. Vinland is a place where anyone and everyone can learn what the reason to live is. It's love, family, fun. These are the pillars to life that so many in their world have yet to experience, where so many have suffered and have lost. Arnaid sought out a reason to keep on living. The slave back in the third chapter sought out a reason to keep on living. Both times, they were soothed by the visions of Vinland, a place where they don't need to suffer. That is what life is supposed to be. Vinland's saga is set in the most brutal period of history, and yet it is a story about love, forgiveness, redemption, and kindness. A story of resilience. It is the story of a man who has accepted the harm he's done. He's not shied away from it. And now he finally understands that the thing he sought out most, violence and the glory of war, is the very thing that poisons their world. Thorfinn doesn't ever ask anyone to forget his past. He makes it known time and again the man he was. There are people in the story that make him never forget it, that keep him accountable. But he blinds people with his goodness and radiance. When it came time to choose who Thorfinn was going to be, he has chosen what is considered weakness and cowardice in this world. He has tossed his pride aside, and he has chosen a path filled with incredible hardships. Thorfinn understands that choosing love and empathy is the most difficult path. Violence is the easiest, but those who can put their pride to the side, who can walk away, who can be loving and kind, that is the mark of the truly strong. He has finally understood why there is no one he needs to hurt. When Leif and Thorfinn reunite for the second time here on Kettle's farm, Thorfinn refuses to leave Arnaid and the fate of the farm in the hands of soldiers. He gives up his chance at freedom to save another. And to it, Leif tells Thorfinn that he is a man now, fully grown. Men are not made through the fires of war and violence. They are not made when they've killed another. Men are made when they choose to help those in need. Men are made when they choose to live as kind men. Thorfinn has now made it his life's mission to create a place where no power can reach. A place no slaver knows. Far to the west, across the great sea, 
and far, far beyond the horizon. This is the road to true redemption.